G'day, and welcome back to Let's Dissect a Couple of Games of Star Realms. Today we're going to have a game against McNutcase, followed by a game against Kaldazar. Hopefully this will be the last uh, episode of this series, at least for a while, because War of the Chosen comes out hopefully tomorrow at the time of the broadcast of this episode. Uh, it's meant to come out on the 29th of August, uh, and... Dust, hopefully the Rand Systems will start up again on the 30th. It all depends on my ability to get something recorded on time and edited and out there. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for that, there'll be a link in the description uh, to a form, or you can use the XCOM 2 Propaganda Center to create a soldier and then email it to join the Rand Systems at ranico.com. All right, without, with that done, let's get started. So, we start, and there's not a great deal of good options on the table. Um, let's just see if I can get it. Yes, okay, great. So, what you can see is I've got not the best starting hand, not the absolute worst, but we've got a scout, a viper, and a scout. So, two cash, one damage, which can get me... Lancer, Warning Beacon, and Explorer. Uh, I grab the Lancer um, because it's 4 damage and if I get other yellow cards that can combo quite well. But otherwise it's, it's not a great set of choices. At least I know I have 4 cash which will hopefully allow me to buy something good next turn. My opponent has 5 cash so they get the mining mech, they immediately start Ah, this is the game against Kaldazar. My bad, whatever. We'll start with Kaldazar. Uh, so my opponent immediately grabs a mining mech, which is definitely what I would have loved to have been able to afford, but there's no way you can get that your first turn. And that lets him thin his deck and significantly make, will make bigger purchases significantly more simple later in, on in the game. And yeah, so I now have four cash and my options on the board aren't great. I choose to get the Falcon. I think this may be the first mistake. I mean, it, it goes well with my previous purchase, but it doesn't help me out in terms of future purchases very much. And I think those those two starting moves were not great. Okay, so my opponent has three cash. And what do they buy? They buy an Explorer and do two damage to me. I have four cash, which means I'm going to buy the Bioformer and do four damage to them. So they have five cash and they get the gunship. I was, I'm pretty sure that would have been what my purchase was. I don't think it's a bad purchase, especially since they could then sacrifice it later to get an even bigger ship. Uh, it's better in my deck than in his, but on the other hand, if it's in his deck, it's not in mine. So, good move. And now I'm left with no good purchases. I wouldn't have been able to afford the gunship anyway. Don't think that's a great deal of solace. Uh, and I have three cash and two damage. The cards did not help. So, I'm going to grab the explorer to hopefully be able to afford more things in the future. Okay, so my opponent scrapped, I believe they scrapped a Viper, that's what I would have done, but let's see, yeah, that was a Viper. I really wish it was a bit more obvious in, the, in these replays, and they have 7 cash, so they get the Imperial Palace, that helps block damage for them, and means that they get, they get a card and I lose a card, it's a really good, simple little base, and if they get another yellow card, it's an extra 4 damage. Um, good purchase, and again, like, that benefits them more than it used to, but it's something that would have worked even better in my deck, but I didn't get the opportunity to buy it. So here I had three cash and the Bioformer, uh, and I buy an Explorer. I think, in retrospect, I should have bought the Peacekeeper this time and sacrifice the bioform. I was basically waiting for a good opportunity to use it and I waited too long. So here they get that gunship, they uh, force me to discard a card and they buy an explorer because we got 
crap cards on the table. And I'm forced to discard, giving me five, which so that gunship basically made this turn a waste. Uh, so I get two explorers and scrap one, net increase of one card, and yeah, two damage to my opponent. It's not not a good turn. And they're continuing to thin their deck. They're buying things, and yeah, they buy both of the um, warning beacons because they got both of those. They got Admiral Rasmussen, so they just got another four damage, and they get to draw a card, which is enough cash. Well, it, it's a useless card, but at least they didn't get it the next turn, and they buy the defense spot, which becomes more valuable the more bases you have. They've just bought a bunch of bases. Good choice. And so I'm in trouble, and I know that. So this is why I've got the orbital platform to try and filter my deck, because I don't have the scrapping capability my opponent does. And I've also got a number of yellow cards, so that works out well. And I'm just doing what damage I can. I can't even take out all of his bases this time. But at least he didn't get the bonuses that he otherwise would have. And again, he's making me discard a card. And he's, yeah, getting to scrap, he's keeping his deck nice and slim, denying me the opportunity to do so, so well played him. And yeah, he's just continuing to scrap down his deck. So he's actually got a deck that is about the same size as mine, despite the fact that he's made more purchases. And so yeah, I'm in a ton of trouble, I know it, even though our life totals are equal. Um, I think here's where he made a minor mistake. So he had enough cash to buy the Dreadnought. Fantastic. I mean, definitely the right kind of ship to buy it this time. But uh, he probably should scrap the should have scrapped those explorers. There's no point leaving them in a stack. Um, where I have another bad turn. I buy the convoy bots. It gives me damage, which I do need at this time. Um, but it, it doesn't really get me anywhere. And so he's again just putting down all of his bases, putting down all of this damage, forcing me to discard. I need at this point 28 damage this turn. And I do not have that. I'm not sure I have that in my deck. I mean I do what I can, but um, complete with using this uh, frigate to buy... what was it? Uh, to buy the Predator, because the Predator then allows me to get another card, um, hopefully being something I can use. Nope. I get through that stuff, and that's it. He's already got 7 damage. I'm not sure how he destroyed my base, not that it mattered. Did the card he- oh, he, the card is scrapped. Yeah, the Cardi Scrap destroys a base. I mean, that's just um, for the rub-ins, but he got the 7 damage he needed. He won there. Um, if he'd gotten only 5 damage, I would have gone slightly further, but I mean, that would have been dead. I could have done 10 damage and then regained 6 health. Yeah, I was not walking out of that. It's not like I was only a turn away from victory. I would have needed another 2 or 3 turns at least. So, yeah. Well played, Kaldazar. And as to where we actually kind of started on the the path to defeat, I think it's basically at the point where I'm not taking advantage of the opportunities early on to clear out that peacekeeper. Because I was literally crippled um, just a couple of times where there were no good purchases for me to make. Uh, and my opponent was also running into that, but not as much. Um, and so just not here, but the next turn. Uh, so here I've got a I've got a pretty crap hand. And I probably should have maybe bought a warning beacon over the explorer just to try and clear out more of the deck. Um, but it's kind of this point where the warning beacons are there um, and the peacekeepers there and I have potentially six cash 
And I should have used it. I should have bought that peacekeeper then. That would have freed up the board. Um, let's see what he bought here. And like this is where this is where I had a dead turn, right? But what happened after those warning beacons were bought? What was left on the table? The defense bot, so that would have given me the ability to get more scrap, or even or him. But it would have been available. Uh, and similarly, Admiral Rasmussen. So both of those are purchases I could have used, and my opponent got a chance at them, and I just did not have the ability to take advantage of this. So, yeah, well played, Kalzar, but I think that's probably the moment where things went wrong, and that's what I need to try and remember. Turns where I'm forced to buy explorers are bad. I should be trying to take what I can to clear the trade row. Even though my opponent will get first crack at whatever comes up, it still provides that movement. The stagnation is what kills. Alright, so now we'll look at that game against McNutcase. Uh, VLC. Alright, but for some reason, rather than opening it and making the window give focus, Windows decided to just do a notification down the bottom. Alright, let's go. So, we start, I'm buying a trade hauler and just doing a little bit of damage. Whereas my opponent gets a star barge and the star market. So, both of those are. Blue? No, one of them is uh, uh, yellow and one's blue. So that's going to give him, uh, if he's buying other bases, it will give him a lot more uh, income. Uh, and it absorbs a lot of hits as well. It's quite powerful if you're getting other bases. If you're not, then it's still useful because it's hard to justify attacking at some points. Even, uh, and it fuels all of your blue trigger abilities. Federation. I really should use the proper names for these things. So I buy the War Elder and the Merc Cruiser and use the War Elder to get rid of my Viper because I'm trying to keep my deck nice and slim so that hopefully it can be faster than my opponents. My opponent has three cash and so they buy up the um, what's it? <sighs> it's the red two cost card that does two damage. Miss Alba and scraps a card. Yeah, so he's also trying to scrap and he gets a solar skiff. And pay attention to that solar skiff, it really work does a lot of work for him. So I buy a cutter, it's one of the best two cost cards in the game, and then an explorer because I don't have anything else and I just hit him. Alright, so he here he can get mech world, which he does, and a fed shuttle. Uh, so he's getting a lot of cheap blue cards, and I, on the other hand, I'm getting a mix. So yeah, I use a trade hauler, I get a cargo launch, which only triggers yellow cards, but it it's pretty useful nonetheless. And I got the parasite, which gives me purchasing power or damage, not both. And so McNuttcase gets the other solar skiff. And then with the four cash remaining, he gets the orbital platform, and that's it. I have eight here, so I go blob world. That sounds great. I've got one blob card. I've got Merc Cruiser, so that both of those give me draws, uh, and otherwise it's five damage. It's a it's a fine card, and do a bit of damage him, uh, and that star market comes out. It gets a patrol cutter. He gets to slim his deck down. Yep, sounds good. And I've got the Battle Barge, so I'm getting more Star Empire cards while doing damage to McNutcase. I mean, this is not looking too bad. And then he gets two Solar Skiffs, and Mech World, and Orbital Platform, and Fed Shuttle. So he's gaining life, he's drawing cards, he's got decks down that basically mean I really need to do damage to get rid of things. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of cash, so I get the Starbase Omega. Again, not a bad card, hard to justify attacking, triggers Star Empire cards, and draws you a card if you play a base that time. That's handy. Enough case gets the Cycler's deck, um, 
which given that his hand was pretty bad is a really good move. This means that he's effectively eliminated the Star Barge and a bunch of other uh, a bunch of scouts from coming up and he's forcing me to discard a card all works out quite well for him and he's bought the peacekeeper which is a good blue card gains him life does a ton of damage draws him a card if he's got other blue cards and he's got a lot of those and he's just guaranteed that he's more likely to get them together and in the meantime i've got to discard that scout i get the imperial frigate to try and again boost my star empire and battle barge to take out the orbital platform and make him discard a card not much else to say there um, it's a pity I couldn't get frontier fairy at this point I really do need to start cutting the Federation because he's got too much but there's not much I can do about it he got death world he's got missile bot and fed shuttle Mech world means that everything's allies abilities are being triggered so it's gaining life He's thinning his deck, he's able to afford just a little bit. And here I've got Merc Cruiser and Blood World. So this allows me to cycle my deck this turn. I buy the survey ship because if I draw it after cycling this, that's not too bad. I'm really kind of hoping that with Blood World and uh, Starbase Omega that I manage to draw the Parasite or potentially something that will... Oh, my Battle Barge. Especially now I've got Starbase Omega, because that would let me do double Blood World, which would have been probably game changing, but also the chances of that happening were relatively slim. And because um, it was one card in 13. And here, McNutt Case having thinned his deck, he's got both of his Solar Skiffs in one hand, he's got the, the Patrol card of the Star Market, it's so blue. So much cash, like he just bought an 8 cost base, hasn't used a star market yet, and is, can afford the stealth needle. I don't know that he even gets a chance to use it before he wins, but he's got a lot of cards, all working well for him, and I do not. So I take out the death world, which is the bigger threat, but I know that he's, yeah, like see he can already trigger things off of the he can trigger the draw a card off of Peacekeeper. He's also now also um, he's also got another base which allows him to trigger Star Market as it itself, and he's just going through his deck, slimming it down further, doing damage to me, and I can't even attack either of these things because I got to attack Mechworld first. So here. At least what I can do is I can uh, grab because of repair bot I can grab the warning beacon and then I've got two bases which allows me to get more from the battle barge and I'll get to draw a card off of Starbase Omega uh, I'm trying to hopefully be able to pull this off twice because I have um, Starbase sorry I've got the battle the parasite purchasing a battle barge and so Warning Beacon lets me draw a card, still it's a 1 in 16 chance, it's not going to happen really, but Cargo Pod allows me to draw a card off of Parasite, Imperial Frigate comes down, I've got the Starbase Omega, which lets me draw one more card, I've then got the Merc Cruiser, this is a really nice turn, but it's not enough. I've still got 14 cards here, my opponent has barely lost any authority overall. I took out a bunch of his bases and that definitely helps me, but not enough. So he discards two scouts, he thins his deck and just hits me for seven because that's eight damage um, plus a viper, so the warning beacon dies. You can see he's ignoring Starbase Omega, it's not really worth attacking. If I can draw a card this turn if I had a base in my hand, then that would be slightly different, but it isn't. So, I don't know why I didn't, I guess I actually was out of scouts to scrap in my deck here. So, I mean, it, if this had gone on longer, maybe I could have turned it around, but I think it's also that when I cycled my deck, I didn't have a bunch of scouts, so 
that may have been a mistake. And here he gets to draw all of the cards, gain all of the life, and just hit me for 13. And I do not have the the damage to do anything. Can't even kill the incinerator. And now McNuck Case just goes through his deck, kind of gets to see just how powerful it is. I mean, this is all technically unnecessary, but don't see the harm in it. And yeah, he definitely wins there. And fairly convincingly. So the key point is, where were, where did I make mistakes? So let's go back to the start. Right, right at the start, I don't think I made any particularly major errors. Right, Trade Hauler was a good first buy. I didn't have any way of knowing what would come up. And I couldn't afford anything else other than Star Barge. And I don't think Star Barge is better than Trade Hauler. Uh, McNutt Case getting both Star Market and the Star Barge in his first turn was really good for him. Um, he got a 5 cash hand. It does mean that I did know at this point what cards he couldn't couldn't afford on the trade row. I didn't take advantage of that. I don't think there was much point. I mean, it did mean that I knew the Battle Barge was safe. So I got to scrap my Viper, which again, I don't think was a bad move. Um, I don't think it, the small amount of damage the Viper would have done was at all helpful. Um, and my opponent is able to get that missile bot. And there's no way I could have denied him the missile bot. And the solar skiff. And that, like, maybe picking up on how much blue he'd gotten, but also he had mech world. So, to a certain extent, a number of those abilities would have been able to trigger anyway. Um, what else? If we go further along... I think he cycled his deck at the right time. I think maybe in retrospect, when I used Blob World, I should have just taken the extra damage. Um, what was my hand like when I used Blob World to cycle my deck? I used Battle Barge to cycle my deck as well. I think some of those were fairly risky. Here's Blob World coming down. And I would have known at the time that the Cruiser was the next card I could get. Yeah. So, I don't think this was a bad cycle, actually. I think maybe the cycle later was bad, but I couldn't have actually avoided that cycle. I don't think it would have helped to do that. So I think the key point was, again, just if you notice your color is going heavily... If, if you notice your opponent is going heavily into another color, you should probably follow them. You should try and pick some of the better cards that you can afford and take them. It's good for you to be one color and it hurts to not do that, but I think part of Star Realms is balancing making your own deck better and making uh, preventing your opponent's deck from getting better. And I think maybe that's something I need to work on. All right. So next time hopefully we will be playing the Resistance. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I've kind of enjoyed making it. It's interesting going back through the games that I've been I've played and try and focus on looking at where I've made mistakes and kind of where some of the more key moments are. I'm not convinced I've entirely I've been entirely successful at determining where those points are. And it's been good especially to be able to look at the games I've lost. It's been good. I've enjoyed it. I hope you have. Until next time, have a great day, and I will see you in the Ransistance. Bye. Join the Ransistance today. We need recruits like you. See the description below for details.